Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to use Talon to get information from a flat file, a comma separated flat file, and uh, how to use SQL Server to look up some information that is kept in that flat file and then how to write it to Salesforce. In Salesforce we have and just a custom demo person object that has an ID, it's ex external, a name, and they have a favorite candy bar and a favorite ice cream. And from our flat file, we get a user ID, which is that external ID, the username, their favorite ice cream ID, and their favorite candy bar ID. And to look up those IDs, we're going to use SQL Server that has just a lookup table that's got candy bars and maps IDs to names and the same thing for ice cream. In Talent, we've set up connections to Salesforce, our demo person object, to SQL Server, the two tables that you see here. To use Talent in SQL Server, uh, there's a machine uh, and that can be found on the uh, Talent's help site. And we've also got a simple CSV input file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag our demo person and create it as a Salesforce connection. And then we are going to drag our input file out and tell it to make it a file input delimited. And we're going to use on sub job OK to tell it to only run this process when this connection is, is successful. And then we'll drag our MySQL tables, the candy bar, and ice cream as MySQL or MySQL, M, uh, my, MS SQL inputs. And the next thing we'll do is drag a tmap, connect the flat file as the main input, and then both of the SQL Server tables as lookups. So now you can see we have one that's a main and two lookup tables. And we're also going to drag our Salesforce demo person as an output and we'll connect the tmap to that, um, create a new output and call it out one, and it asks if we want to get the schema of the target component, we tell it yes. So now we'll go into the tmap, or the tmap element, drag our ice cream as a lookup to the ice cream table and our candy bar ID as a lookup to the candy bar table and we'll drag the candy bar name over to the favorite candy bar, the ice cream name to the favorite ice cream. We'll drag this user ID to the demo person ID and I've set that in Salesforce as an external ID and we'll drag the username to the name field. Now I'm going to delete some things from the output the ID owner ID and is deleted uh, along with the create, modify, and system mod step. I'm going to get rid of those because those are handled internally by Salesforce and say OK. And then Talon asks if we want to propagate the changes. So we tell it yes. So this element knows what fields to write. We'll change it to an upsert, which is an update or insert and tell it that the unique column, the key column, is the person ID. One thing that uh, I have to do here is to uh, change this to make it a string value because it'll fail otherwise. And you'll notice that it got rid of my name column. So what I have to do is go back into my team app, see that the name is there and sync the columns, check it again. Now everything is mapped correctly. We can see in Salesforce that we have John Doe, his favorite candy bars, three musketeers, and his favorite ice cream is vanilla. And we're going to run our Salesforce job, our demo job, and it will get the three rows, go into Salesforce, and you can see that John Doe's favorite candy bar and ice cream updated as well as we got two new users, uh, Jane Doe and Bob Person. So if we go back into the flat file, we change Bob's name to Tom and 
we can change the ice cream and candy bar and go ahead and run it again, we will see that the records in Salesforce have been updated properly. So that's just getting some simple information out of a flat file and out to Salesforce, but there's also the case that something gets changed inside of Salesforce and you want to export that out to whatever third party you're doing this for. So we're going to do the same kind of thing where we create the connection to Salesforce and this time as our source we will use the demo person as the source, connect the same on sub job OK, get the candy bar as an input and the ice cream as an input, get a tmap operation and we will hook up the Salesforce as the main and then we're still using our SQL server as the lookup table and then I have an output file just a users out created as a file output delimited and call this out to and it asks if we want to get the schema of the target component and say yes and so here we want to get the uh, demo person ID as the user ID the name as the username the favorite ice cream will now link up to the ice cream name and we'll get the ice cream ID and the candy bar name and we'll get the candy bar ID. One thing that does have to be done because we have an integer as our output column because Salesforce uh, stores them as doubles um, as you can see here it's got the person ID as a double. We'll create a variable and we'll just call it user ID and we'll tell it it's an integer and all we have to do is take this demo person ID and cast it as an int, just a primitive cast, and move it over and say OK. And now the other thing we want to do is tell it to include the header in the output file and then we'll run it. The same thing that had to happen previously to update this, the custom object name needs to happen on this one. So you can see that error might just be the version of talent. So now we got our IDs and names there. So if we were to go into Salesforce and change this guy's name back to Bob person and save that and chase his favorite candy bar to the Three Musketeers and then go back and run our job once more. And you'll see that the flat file is also updated. So now it can be sent to whatever third party needs this information. That's all I have. Thank you very much.